One, two, three. The Owen submachine gun. It was one of the best submachine guns of World War II. Despite this, it's not very well known. It was developed in Australia by a young inventor, Evelyn Owen, and refined by Lysot Works as a passion and patriotic undertaking for the smallest of profit. The Owens served Australia well, as the Commonwealth had few options for submachine guns during the war. Australia was first armed with American Thompsons, which were good submachine guns but extremely expensive and heavy. Cheaper alternatives to the Thompsons, such as the American Grease Gun, was introduced too late in the war, and the very cheaply made British Sten was not popular. In Attack Force Z, Anzac Special Forces are inaccurately shown as using Grease Guns. You think I'm making a mess of this? No, I don't. In and out. Never let them know you're there. Neither the Sten or the Thompson was as well liked by the Anzacs as the Owen. The Owen was inexpensive to build, and a quality reliable firearm, weighing a bit less than the Thompson. The magazine was a 33 round double stack double feed magazine, unique in that the ejector was built on the magazine and not the gun. This helped with the gun's unusual but efficient disassembly. There was also an experimental horseshoe magazine, which was a rare thing, manufactured in the field. These may have inspired some of the crazy loadouts in Call of Duty. New intel, ready for report. Double kill. Air package stopped and ready. The stock of the Owen is easily removed, making it lighter and more compact. It's a very well-balanced weapon, and with the foregrip, it's highly controllable fired from the hip, with or without the stock. What do you think of that, eh? Do you remember me? Stanley Davidson, order boy! This was a well-liked firearm by the Australians, who had to use it primarily in the jungles of the Pacific. The Owen fired 9mm rounds up to 700 rounds a minute, and offered select fire for semi or fully automatic use. This made it an excellent weapon for anyone leading a column or file in a jungle setting, as it places the most automatic fire at the front. The Owen's design is quite a simple blowback design firing from an open bolt. Some consider the top loading magazine a disadvantage, but the sight is placed only slightly to the side and allows for a soldier to more comfortably fire and reload from the prone. It also allows gravity to assist the magazine's spring in pushing cartridges down to the breech. Furthermore, soldiers aren't tempted to stress the magazines by hanging onto them as foregrips. Right, Sarge? Further reliability features include a separate compartment inside the receiver, which isolate the small diameter bolt from its retracting handle by means of a small bulkhead preventing dirt from jamming the bolt. The rounds are also ejected from underneath the weapon, meaning dirt and sand fall out the same way. Highly appreciated in the jungle. Pouring sand over the mechanism can't stop its non-stop performance. Even burying it in sand makes no difference. You can catch the Owen used frequently in the Cower Breakout from 1984, which has some Anzac combat scenes in Papua New Guinea then chronicles the story of over 1,000 Japanese POWs who attempted escape from the Kaura POW camp in New South Wales. It was one of the largest and bloodiest prisoner escapes of World War II. To see the Owen in action in Australia's often overlooked role in the Vietnam War, watch the excellent Danger Close, the Battle of Long Tan. Righto, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this short brief on what was really a fantastic submachine gun made by our Anzac allies. Feel free to add anything in the comments section, and I wish you a good day.